hello everyone. Um, my name is Nick. I'm backend team lead at OneInch. And uh, today I want to talk about our new um, feature and new product. It's called OneInch Fusion. And I have some points why I think it's the future of DeFi, and I will try to explain it today. Um, let me just make a small recap before I will talk about Fusion. If you don't know what is OneInch, OneInch is like one of the leading uh, like project in DeFi space. Uh, we basically are DEX aggregator. Right now it's just a bit more than DEX aggregator. We have multiple products. Uh, Vanish was started at 2019 at Ethereum New York Hackathon. So it was built by hackers and Hackathon as a lot of good, great like Ethereum-based projects. Uh, currently we have a lot of like volumes. We have more than 2.8 million users. Uh, we have a lot of liquidity that we aggregate over multiple networks. Currently, we do support more than 10 EVM networks, and we are going to grow up a bit more soon. Um, yeah, that's like some small recap. We do have multiple products uh, that we are focused right now. We do have aggregation protocol. It's our main protocol that actually aggregates all like liquidity sources and allows you to make one trend, like swap pretty. Uniswap like, I think some you always used some of them, some of us already use one inch. And we do have a limit order protocol that allows you to execute and like DeFi trades with the specific price without any like price going down and, and up. But, and also we do have a one inch fusion right now. It's like actually a combination of one inch limit order protocol and aggregation protocol. We do also have a non-custodial mobile wallet called one inch wallet. Uh, it's available on Okay, well, on multiple platforms, Android and Apple Store. And right now we also do have a 1-inch Pro. So uh, we have a bunch of products that, that you can use. So um, let's talk a bit about 1-inch Fusion and what is it. Um, basically, it's pretty the same feature that allows you to swap any token to any other token. Um, but there are some additional points that, that make it better than just usual swap on Uniswap, for example. Um, the first one is actually it's uh, mostly gasless transactions. So you don't need to pay directly gas for each transaction that you made when you swap a token. It doesn't work in all cases. I will talk a bit later about it. But usually it's gasless for, for, you, for user. The, the next point, it actually allows to protect you from minor acceptable value attacks. If you don't know what is it, I recommend to, do, to Google it about a, bit, a bit. There are a lot of uh, presentations about MIF attacks, how it works. Um, actually, it's a good point, but it's not about it today. Um, and also, we do have much more liquidity in this case. Uh, I will explain later why it, it's, it, it looks like that. Um, so let's talk a bit about gasless execution, how it works. Basically, when you do a transaction, you don't do you don't do actually on-chain transaction each time you create an order using one inch fusion. You do off-chain transaction. You basically sign a specific structure that allow with the conditions on it, how you are planning, like what the, what is the minimum amount that you want to receive, what is the source token, destination token. And we put all this data to the specific limit order storage. It's just, basically it's just P2P database that anyone can access and get these orders. Uh, Gasless transaction doesn't mean that you don't pay for gas. It's just included into the price uh, of, the, of the rate. It's just included into the rate. So the rate is a bit different than if you will try to make a direct swap. But it's still a bit cheaper than doing the direct swap because of the architecture that, that we do have at 1-inch fusion. Um, I will show it a bit later. Uh, another feature that we have, like if, if you, you can look at it like that, that we after, after we execute transaction, if we put this transaction to the limit order storage, uh, somebody can put, get it from the limit order storage database and execute it on the blockchain. There is another party, it's called actually market, like market, like there is market maker and market taker. So market taker can put your order to the blockchain and execute it. And this person is paying for the gas of this transa transaction. So, uh, another point is uh, protection from minor acceptable wallet attacks. And um, I think it's a bit hard to see, but uh, usually in this case, when you put it to the limit order storage, there is a, there, there is a party called resolvers. It's actually a party that fill your transactions and like, basically executes all, all of the transactions on your behalf. And in this case, uh, the transaction price is 
based on the limit order and there is no any price movement. And that means that any bot that trying to watch your transaction, they can't actually somehow make impact on the price. So you are protected by default from any attack by any liquidity bots, like by any front runners. But that doesn't mean that resolvers are protected from it. But it's not about like end users actually. And uh, another point that we do have right now, it's uh, basically a li limitless liquidity, how it works. Um, when you create a limit fusion order, fusion transaction, it's not, it's not instant transaction on the blockchain. It allows resolvers to accumulate liquidity during, in multiple places during, during some, some limited time, for example, a couple of minutes. And in some cases, it will allow you to get at least, I think, the best price possible on the market because uh, during this amount of time, any resolver can accumulate liquidity from multiple sectors, from any flash loan, or from personal sources, from private market makers. It's much more easier to do that if you have a constraint about a couple of minutes, not instant atomic transaction that it was before. That's why liquidity is much more higher in these cases. It's, I think it's the most, I think it's like, the best option that is possible right now, on the market right now. Um, so um, basically, um, when you create a fusion order, it actually works like a, an auction. It's a price auction where you have a rate. You can like, take a look on this chart. Basically, uh, this is like the rate chart, and this is the time auction time. And when the price the price is going down a bit because you want during the the order what what are you doing you actually want to sell it on the market you want to have the best price but you need to you want to sell it instantly during some limited time limited amount of time and it started from the good price and going down there are multiple like charts multiple options and strategies to make the perfect market sell for different tokens it depends on the token pair token liquidity and we have automated like row path how to calculate the best like strategy for the auction for the auction that we are making and there are multiple dynamic price formulas but all of that actually is pretty transparent when you're executing the order so you understand what is the minimum amount that you can sell what is the minimum rate what is the maximum rate for what you're trying to sell so it's pretty transparent for the user for the end user um, overall it looks pretty like that I think it's still pretty hard to understand it with this view, but uh, I will try to make us like as multiple steps. Um, user needs to make an order and sign it, and it goes to the network, one inch network like client. After that, it registered through the one inch like like one inch DAO, and all the resolvers can get access to the, your orders. It's just off chain part. If resolvers are okay to fill your transaction, they do this using one inch network contract. And after that, it goes directly to the limit orders database, and it's executed as a field order. And uh, user just need to do two things: you need to sign this limit order and give a permission for your tokens to execute it on the limit order protocols. It's like it's just basic token approval, your C20 approval. So, um, actually, the good part about uh, working of the Vanish Fusion is that it's pretty decentralized and. Anyone can be a resolver. So anyone can participate in resolving one each transactions for the users and earn some profits from it. Um, it's a bit different from the cow swap because in our case, you can execute it without, uh, the entry point, entry, entry point is pretty low. You just need to stake about 100 one each tokens on the governance contract and you are like, and right now after that you can go to the, you can be a one each resolver actually and get all the orders and actually get the profits. Um, we do have multiple options how you can work with one inch fusion right now. The first one that you can create one inch fusion orders and integrate it to the, your wallet, for example. Uh, I think it's the, one of the best options right now to get like to get the best price on the, any token to any other token in a non-custodial way. So we do have a documentation about that, and you can also become a resolver if you're interested in it. Um, we do have multiple incentives, and we do also a sponsor for the Ethereum Denver Hackathon. We have a lot of like grants and like nominations for anyone who can integrate one each fusion orders inside your app. So you are welcome to do this. And if you want to become a resolver, we are also, you are also welcome to do this. Uh, you can contact anyone who is uh, like at one inch. On this event, we have about 20 people here. So you are welcome to contact us and ask any questions about resolver or one inch fusion. I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, thank you.
You can also scan the QR codes for any detailed information about fusion orders or how to become a resolver.